And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. The duties of the office of which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Historic moment, nearly a year in the making for U.S. Ambassador to Germany. We have one now, Richard Grinnell, who has uh, his work cut out for him after President Trump said just last week that he doesn't think all the European countries are paying their fair share to NATO, including Germany. Watch. We need a reciprocal relationship, which we don't have. The chancellor and I have discussed it today at length, and we're working on it, and we want to make it more fair, and the chancellor wants to make it more fair. Same thing with NATO. Talking trade and NATO there, here now exclusively in his first interview since being sworn in is U.S. Ambassador to Germany, Rick Grinnell. How does that sound, Rick? You like that handle? Sounds very weird. Please just call me Rick. <laughs> so tell me what that was like today, because I know, you know, as we said in the intro, this took forever. It was held up in the Senate yeah. for months and months and months and months. Yeah, look, I mean, look, I'm humbled and honored. It's, it's amazing. One of the reasons why I got really focused on candidate Donald Trump and uh, Mike Pence and the ticket and to really try to push forward was simply because they eschew politics and they're really focused on the American people and the American taxpayer in particular. And what I saw uh, last Friday when I was sitting in on the meetings watching President Trump negotiate with Chancellor Merkel really, I have to tell you, was a culmination of 25 years working in this industry. I've mm -hmm. longed to work for a president mm -hmm. who really focuses on the taxpayer. This is a guy who is incredibly good at negotiations. I wish every American could see him do it because he's completely relentless about the American taxpayer. And he does it in a very nice way. He's actually very complimentary to the other side. Uh, it's really the art of the deal. It's quite amazing. I mean, it is. It's fascinating to hear you say that. To hear, I mean, you worked for uh, a number of administrations. You were at the United Nations for a long time, and I know you were frustrated um, by what you saw. What you know, what is President Trump like with Angela Merkel? I mean, not to betray anything from behind closed doors, but you know, just in terms of how he, because everyone thinks they don't have a great relationship. And but you're yeah. talking about the way that he's able to to press, but to do so diplomatically. Oh, he was extremely complimentary to uh, Chancellor Merkel and what she's accomplished. Um, and he does it in a way that, that is real. Um, look, to, to, to be in that moment, you have to understand that when you're watching two people um, negotiate, two uh, officials, mm. what I've usually seen is that a U.S. official make a plea to the other side to, to come along to our side to do what we want because it's the right thing to do or we make this moral argument about, you know, this is what we believe that the world looks like or this is what we should do. Yeah. And, and I think it doesn't work that way. The other side usually brings in their economy, brings in their trade issues, and they, they integrate the issues into a negotiation. President Trump is the first U.S. official that I've seen that actually pulls in every piece yeah. of the agricultural department. No, it's you know, he's really got interesting. I mean, he has said with the southern border, you know, this is going to be about NATO. You know, if we don't have security, right. it's going to hurt you on NATO. He's joining totally. the economic uh, issue with the diplomatic issue in a way that I think is, is completely un unprecedented. I've for that. And you've seen that, you know, from the, from the front row. The Iran deal, uh, it, it's largely believed that he's not going to recertify this on May 12th. So you're going to be in a situation where you're going to perhaps have to broach that discussion with Chancellor Merkel. Do you think there's room for European countries to come along and renegotiate that deal? Let me tell you where there is room for German companies to stop doing business inside Iran. We mm. cannot have that. Uh, you look at what Iran does, uh, their human rights record, whether it's uh, working uh, to destabilize Syria. They've got, uh, look, the, the, the world's importer, of, of terrorism. They're a state sponsor of terrorism. They spend billions of dollars to spread terrorism around the world. Why would a country want to do business with them? So I think it's going to be uh, incumbent upon me to kind of explain to the German uh, businesses that they do not want to do business inside Iran. It's yep. just not right. What about trade? I mean, clearly you heard the president in that soundbite. He wants there to be a reciprocal agreement. He's doing bilateral agreements pretty much with every single country. How's that going to work? 
Look, I think that it can work. First of all, when it comes to Germany, Germany is the largest economy in Europe, so they're eager to have an, a working trade relationship with the United States. As President Trump says, it needs to be free and fairer, and so that's what we're going to work towards. All the best to you, Rick, uh, in the new position. Thanks, Martha. Um, ambassador to Germany, the 29th, did they say? 29th. 29th ambassador to Germany. Um, a lot of history there. Thanks, Rick. We'll talk to you soon. Best of luck. Thanks.